Hey everybody, I'm on day three of reading to you the one and only Ivan, and I'm going to start with a chapter that says, Shapes in Clouds. I think I've always been an artist, even as a baby still clinging to my mother. I had an artist's eye. I saw shapes in the clouds and sculptures in the tumbled stones at the bottom of a stream. I grabbed at colors, the crimson flowers just out of reach, the ebony birds streaking past. I don't remember much about my early life, but I do remember this. Whenever I got the chance, I would dip my fingers into cool mud and use my mother's back for a canvas. She was a patient soul, my mother. Someday, I hope I can draw the way Julia draws, imagining words that don't yet exist. I know what most humans think. They think gorillas don't have imaginations. They think we don't remember our pasts or ponder our futures. Come to think of it, I suppose they have a point. Mostly I think about what is, not what could be. I've learned not to get my hopes up. When the Big Top Mall was first built, it smelled of new paint and fresh hay, and humans came to visit from morning till night. They drifted past my domain like logs on a lazy river. Lately, a day might go by without a single visitor. Max says he's worried. He says I'm not cute anymore. He says, Ivan, you've lost your magic, old guy. You used to be a hit. It's true that some of my visitors don't linger the way they used to. They stare through the glass. They cluck their tongues. They frown while I watch my TV. He looks lonely, they say. Not long ago, a little boy stood before my glass, tears streaming down his smooth red cheeks. He must be the loneliest gorilla in the world, he said, clutching his mother's hand. At times like that, I wish humans would understand me the way I understand them. It's not so bad. I wanted to tell the little boy, with enough time, you can get used to almost anything. My visitors are often surprised when they see the TV that Mac put in my domain. They seem to find it odd, the sight of a gorilla staring at tiny humans in a box. Sometimes I wonder, though, isn't that the way they stare at me sitting in my tiny box just as strange? My TV is old, it doesn't always work, and sometimes days go by before anyone remembers to turn it on. I'll watch anything, but I'm practically fond, or particularly fond of cartoons with their bright jungle colors. I especially enjoy it when someone slips on a banana peel. Bob, my dog friend, loves TV almost as much as I do. He prefers to watch professional bowling and cat food commercials. Bob and I have seen many romance movies, too. In a romance, there is much hugging and sometimes face licking. I have yet to see a single romance star starring a gorilla. We also enjoy old Western movies. In a Western, someone always says, this town ain't big enough for both of us, Shara. In a Western, you can tell who the good guys are and who the bad guys are, and the good guys always win. Bob says Westerns are nothing like real life. I've been in my domain for 9,855 days, alone. For a while, when I was young and foolish, I thought I was the last gorilla on earth. I tried not to dwell on it. Still, it's hard to stay upbeat when you think there are no more of you. Then one night, after I watched a movie about men in black hats with guns and feeble-minded horses, a different show came on. It was not a cartoon, not a romance, not a western. I saw a lush forest. I heard birds murmuring. The grass moved. The trees rustled. Then I saw him. He was a bit threadbare and scrawny and not as good looking as I am, to be honest. But sure enough, he was a gorilla. And suddenly as he appeared, the gorilla vanished. And in his place was a scruffy white animal called, I learned, a polar bear. And then a chubby water creature called a manatee, and then another animal and another. All night I sat wondering about the gorilla I'd glimpsed. Where did he live? Would he ever come to visit? If there was a he somewhere, could there be a she as well? Or was it just the two of us in all the world trapped in our own separate boxes? Stella says she's sure I'll see another real live gorilla someday. I believe her because she's even older than I am. And she has eyes like black stars and knows more than I will ever know. Stella is a mountain. Next to her, I'm a rock. 
and Bob the dog is a grain of sand. Every night when the stores close and the moon washes the world with milky light, Stella and I talk. We don't have much in common, but we have enough. We are huge and alone, and we both love yogurt raisins. Sometimes Stella tells stories of her childhood, of leafy canopies hidden by mist and the so busy songs of flowing water. Unlike me, she recalls every detail of her past. Stella loves the moon with its untroubled smile. I love the feel of the sun on my belly. She says, it's quite a belly, my friend. And I say, thank you, so is yours. We talk, but not too much. Elephants like gorillas do not waste words. Stella used to perform in a large and famous circus, and she still does some of those tricks for our show. During one stunt, Stella stands on her hind legs while Snickers jumps on her head. It's hard to stand on your hind legs when you weigh more than 40 men. If you're a circus elephant and you stand on your hind legs while a dog jumps on your head, you get a treat. If you do not, the claw stick comes swinging. Elephant hide is thick as bark on an ancient tree, but a claw stick can pierce it like a leaf. Once Stella saw a trainer hit a bull elephant with a claw stick. A bull is like a silverback, noble, contained, calm like a cobra is calm. When the claw stick caught in the bull's flesh, he tossed the trainer into the air with his tusk. The man flew, Stella said, like an ugly bird. She never saw the bull again. And here's Stella. Stella's trunk is a miracle. She can pick up a single peanut with elegant precision, tickle a passing mouse, tap the shoulder of a dozing ke uh, keeper. Her trunk is remarkable, but still it can't unlatch the door of her tumble-down domain. Circling Stella's legs are long-ago scars from the chains she wore it in her youth, her bracelets, she calls them. When she worked at the famous circus, Stella had to balance on a pedestal for her most difficult trick. One day, she fell off and injured her foot. When she went lame and lagged behind the other elephants, the circus sold her to Mac. Stella's foot never healed completely. She limps when she walks, and sometimes her foot gets infected when she stands in one place too long. Last winter, Stella's foot swelled to twice its normal size. She had a fever and she laid on the damp, cold floor of her domain for five days. They were very long days. Even now, I'm not sure she's completely better. She never complains, though, so it's hard to know. At the Big Top Mall, no one bothers with iron shackles. A bristly rope tied to a bolt in the floor is all that's required. They think I'm too old now to cause trouble, said Stella. Old age, she said, is a powerful disguise. Now, I wonder what you think this meant when Ivan says when Stella was, her foot was swollen and she laid on the floor and had a fever for five days. He says they were very long days. Do you think the days were actually longer? What do you think he means by that? And Stella seems like she remembers a lot about her past. Why do you think it is that Ivan doesn't, or does he just not want to? Was he taken at a younger age? Or do you think Stella wants to remember things? I will read more um, next time we meet and think about drawing a picture of what you and your friend, think of a friend, what you and your friend have in common, and maybe what's different about you and what you like best about your friend. Okay. See you tomorrow.